Hello everyone, so today I would like to talk about cardiac remodeling. Okay, so what's cardiac remodeling? Cardiac remodeling is when the heart changes in size, in shape, and in its function. The characteristic of cardiac remodeling would be um, enlargement of the, uh, and the walls, the cardiac walls. So here you have a normal heart, and over here you have a heart that is um, after cardiac remodeling. So, how does this all start? Um, so, there's many causes to that initiate cardiac remodeling and they are myocardiac impaction, so or heart, heart attack, pressure overload, such as hypertension or aortic stenosis, inflammatory um, heart muscle disease, such as uh, myocarditis, idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy, which is, means we don't know why, but it's just um, the heart walls are just bigger. And then volume overload um, caused by valvular regurgitation. So uh, for today, I will we'll focus on the pathway caused by myocardial infarction. So normally the heart, okay, a normal heart can just pump blood out normally. Okay, so what that means uh, is then the body gets efficient blood and oxygen but after a heart attack, you get some damaged cells. So the red lines there show that um, damaged cells. So this is post MI or post heart attack. And then you get a reduced cardiac output. And this reduced cardiac output causes the baroreceptors to be activated and then activate the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, so when the sympathetic nervous system is um, activated, it releases catechoamine. Uh, and catechol amine can bind to uh, beta receptors and alpha receptors. So when it's bound to beta receptors, uh, it causes the release of renin, and renin helps to convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Okay, Angiotensin 1 is then converted to A, uh, angiotensin 2 using uh, through ACE inhibitors in the ACE, uh, angiotensin converting enzymes in the lungs. Angiotensin 2 and has a uh, vasoconstriction effect and it also uh, helps to release aldosterone. Aldosterone and goes on to um, cause sodium retention which causes fluid retention. Now you can see so what that trying to do that whole process what it's trying to do is to maintain cardiac output. But when cardiac output isn't maintained um, this whole cycle is then uh, starts again and baroreceptors is then triggered and so on and so forth and when what you can see when you have vasoconstriction you increases the resistance to which again the heart has to pump against fluid retention uh, causes uh, more pressure to which again the heart has to pump against so the heart has to compensate for this uh, and compensate for its dead cells by enlarging its ventricle walls. Uh, but as it enlarges its ventricle walls, the volume it can hold is now reduced. Okay, and what that means is then you get lower cardiac output, and the cycle starts again. And this is when untreated, left untreated, you can get you get chronic heart failure and eventually death. Okay. So in the next part, I will talk about pharmacological management and how to um, slow down the disease progression of heart failure.